Hello people of the internet and welcome back to the next episode of What is 3D Printing? My name's Ben Redwood and today we're going to be talking about SLS printing. Selective laser sintering, or SLS, is part of the powder bed fusion category and utilizes a heat source, typically a laser, to sinter or fuse thermoplastic polymer powder together to produce a solid part. So, how does SLS actually produce parts? Well, you might notice that I don't have a printer on our desk next to me today. And the reason for this is SLS printers are large industrial machines that just won't fit here. To begin printing, a recoating blade spreads a thin layer of powder over the build platform. A laser then scans the first layer of the part, selectively sintering and fusing particles of the powder together. When the laser has completed fusing a layer, the build platform moves down one layer height and the recoating blade spreads a fresh layer of powder back over the newly sintered laser. The process is then repeated, sintering over and over again, building the part up one layer at a time. The print bin is then removed from the printer and the parts in the powder are allowed to cool. The result of this though, is that all the parts are surrounded by unsintered powder. What this means is that each time an SLS printer is used to produce parts, the entire build volume is used whether the bin is full of sintered parts or not. Because of this, it is most cost effective to fill the bin to the maximum capacity and jam as many parts as possible as you can in there. SLS printers typically have a build size of approximately 300 millimeters cubed. However, some of the larger printers can go up to 750 millimeters in one direction. Layer height for SLS printing is typically not adjustable, with 100 microns being standard across most machines. One new technology that produces parts similar to SLS is MJF, or multi-jet fusion. Both technologies utilize a heat source to fuse powder together to produce parts one layer at a time. The main difference between MJF and SLS is the heat source. While SLS uses a laser to scan and center each cross section of the part, MJF uses a fusing agent that is dispensed onto the powder to promote the absorption of infrared light. An infrared energy source then passes over the build platform, fusing the affected areas together and completing each layer of the part. Both technologies use a thermoplastic polymer, typically nylon, to produce parts, and they have similar mechanical properties and surface finishes. The big difference is again the heat source, which allows MGF to produce parts slightly faster than SLS. In the description of this video, you can find a link to a more in-depth comparison between SLS and MJF. I like to keep things simple though, and because these technologies produce parts that are so similar, I'm just going to refer to everything as SLS through the rest of this video. So how do you know if SLS is the right printing technology for your parts? Material-wise, SLS uses polyamides, and the most common of these is nylon. Nylon has excellent long-term stability and high chemical resistance. It's also very strong. Couple this with the fact that SLS parts are more isotropic than FDM or SLA, and you can understand why SLS is the best solution for functional designs. Because SLS parts are surrounded by powder during the printing process, they don't require support material, one of the key advantages of this technology. As a result, support does not need to be removed after printing, unlike SLA or FDM. This also means that SLS parts generally have a very consistent overall surface finish. The small laser spot size and tiny grains of powder that SLS uses to produce parts make the technology great for parts with intricate details. Also, because the technology does not depend on support material, complex shapes and geometries can be produced. A great example are hollow sections and channels like this part here. These are no problem for SLS. A disadvantage to SLS printing is the longer print time and post-processing time required. Unlike FDM, parts are never ready to use straight off the build platform. Firstly, parts are required to cool in the powder bin before they can even be handled. Then, once the parts are cooled down, the loose powder must be broken away and then cleaned off afterwards. SLS printing is generally more expensive than FDM and SLA, 
This is an industrial process with printers costing around $250,000, operated by highly skilled workers and using advanced material handling processes. It is certainly not a desktop technology and as a result, parts on average cost more per cubic centimetre than FDM or SLA. Finally, SLS parts have an inherently rough surface finish, similar to a high grit sandpaper. One upside to this though, is the porosity means they can easily be dyed a large range of colours. So once you've decided that SLS is the ideal solution for your parts, there are a few handy design things to keep in mind. Because SLS uses heat during printing, parts are susceptible to warping and shrinking. To combat these, SLS printers use a heated build chamber that heats up the powder before printing to just below the sintering temperature. Over sintering occurs when trapped heat fuses unsintered powder around a feature. This unsintered powder is fused solid, causing the feature to lose detail or closing the feature entirely. Over sintering is generally associated with smaller features, holes and slots in particular. As this image shows, the best way to reduce the likelihood of over-sintering occurring is to reduce your wall thickness. Thinner walls dissipate heat at a faster rate. To save weight, and sometimes costs, SLS parts are printed hollow. To remove the unsintered powder from the hollow sections, we require escape holes. Escape holes should be a minimum of 5mm diameter, but bigger is always better. As SLS does not require support material, Part orientation is less of a factor in the design when compared to other 3D printing technologies. SLS parts are usually orientated in the print bin to optimize packing and fit. For more information on designing parts for SLS, we've got some handy guides and links below down in the description. As we discussed earlier, each time an SLS printer wants to produce a part, it has to utilize the entire volume of the print bin. One advantage of this is that multiple parts can be manufactured in a single build, offering viable economies of scale at certain build sizes. A good rule of thumb is that if parts are smaller than a fist, they could be ideal for SLS batch manufacturing. While SLS is not going to compete with injection moulding anytime soon, it does offer some key advantages for lower production runs. For one, a die is not required, and this is often a large part of the cost associated with injection moulding. Also, the parts do not require draft angles or any of the other design constraints imposed by injection moulding, and SLS parts are comparatively strong and functional. For this reason, it can be a viable option for smaller parts that require production runs of 500 to 1000. SLS is popular in a large range of industries where complex geometries and strong functional parts are required. The automotive industry and the aerospace industry have latched onto this technology and brackets and enclosures made by SLS are now commonplace. One of my favourite examples of 3D printing really closing the loop on manufacturing is the fact that MJF printers are used to produce more than 140 parts that are actually in the machines themselves. Okay, so now you're an SLS master, but let's do a quick recap of what we've learned in this video. SLS parts are strong and functional, as well as being isotropic. When printing with SLS, the whole bin volume is used, so you should jam as many parts in to make your print cost effective. This also allows for some low to mid volume production. SLS doesn't require any support material, meaning very complex designs can easily be printed. How does it stack up against the other technologies in our video series? Well, FDM is your fast, cheap prototyping tool. SLA gives you smooth surfaces and intricate details on small parts, but SLS is the king of strong, complex designs. In the next episode, we'll talk about metal 3D printing, the hottest topic in the world of 3D printing right now.